Welcome to Goober Town Hobbies. My name is Brent, and I found something at the dump. An opportunity. This table doesn't look like much right now, but it has so much potential. This isn't plywood, this isn't particle board with a wood veneer, this is a solid hardwood table. Somebody thought this was trash, but I have a power sander and a dream. This started out as a nice kitchen table, but over the years it got beat up. It got dings and scratches. It got splattered with droplets of paint and solvents. There are even some mysterious burn marks on it. Even worse, I can tell that the owners didn't use coasters. None of that is a problem though. This is wood all the way through, so I can sand as deep as I need to get rid of all those imperfections. I'm using 80 grit sandpaper here. It chews through the outer layers reasonably fast without adding new scuffs to the surface. I sanded through all the stain and got down to some nice fresh wood. Just look at the difference. This is gonna turn out great. The tabletop is the easiest to sand because it's flat. It took a little less than an hour to strip it down. Then I moved on to all the other surfaces. The legs have some curve to them, but it's gentle enough that they're still easy to sand. And look at that burn mark. Okay, next are the edges of the table. There are more curves and corners, and some of those valleys are harder to hit with a sander. This took a little more time than the flat surfaces, but I got there eventually. Finally, I sanded down a few strips of wood on the underside of things. For this, I was careful not to lay the table surface directly on the pavement. I don't want to scuff up that brand new tabletop just yet. Moving along, I gave the tabletop a final pass with 150 grit sandpaper. This made it nice and smooth, and now I'm ready to put it all back together. It's clear that this table was designed to extend and have a removable leaf in the center. What happened to that I'll never know, but that's okay. The table is pretty big without it, 42 by 65 inches. So yeah, I don't need these metal sliders to actually slide, but they still add a lot of strength and stability to the table. The table was in parts when I found it, but I was lucky enough to find all the parts that I needed. No leaf insert and no chairs, but that's A-OK. -okay. Next up, the legs. One of the reasons that I decided to grab this from the dump was that I could see the leg joints were very well designed and that this table would be really solid once it was bolted together. And here we are. Indeed, this is super solid. The next step is to wipe it all down with a bit of mineral spirits to remove all the dust and get it ready to be oiled. You can see how thirsty that unfinished wood is. And now we're finally at the fun part. I'm using tongue oil here, just wiping it on with a rag. Tongue oil soaks into the wood and then hardens. This seals and protects while also making the table look awesome. I love how that first layer of oil changes the tone of the wood as it soaks in. At first, the wood will take up a ton of oil and the change is dramatic. This is going to look so good. So I pretty much always keep an eye out for old furniture at the dump and on the side of the street. People throw away furniture all the time. A lot of it is particle board or plywood, but every once in a while you'll find something made out of actual wood. I'm really happy with this find, but it's not like it was a stroke of incredible luck. Anyone can find an old kitchen table for free or for very cheap if you keep your eyes open. The street, the dump, garage sales, classified ads, Craigslist, people are always getting rid of old tables. Don't worry about the outer cosmetic layer. Painted, stained, scuffed, it doesn't matter. If it was built solid from real wood, then it can be reborn. That nasty outward appearance just makes the piece cheaper for you to acquire, and it makes refinishing it even more rewarding. I don't think that there is such a thing as an ugly wood grain. Wood is just one of those inherently beautiful things. A few hours after the first coat, I came back with the second. By now, the first layer has soaked into the table and the surface is dry to the touch. With each subsequent layer, less and less oil soaks into the table and the surface gets harder and shinier. With enough coats, the surface will be almost as hard and well sealed as if I was using polyurethane. In theory, it should be easy to repair a tongue oil finish a few years from now by simply adding another coat of oil. 
I could have used stains or polyurethane or any number of other things to finish the table, I just happened to like this tongue oil. And a few hours later, I gave the table a quick once over with 400 grit sandpaper to make the surface nice and smooth. Then a quick wipe down with mineral spirits, then a final coat of tongue oil. So yeah, we're getting really close now. This project took about four hours of sanding on a Saturday afternoon, and then maybe two hours of work spread across a lazy Sunday. I used up three pieces of sandpaper, three rags, a few splashes of mineral spirits, and maybe a third of a bottle of tongue oil. Assuming you can find a worthy table in the trash, which honestly is not that difficult, then you can pull off this project for less than $10. I'd call this project cheap and easy, and the results are pretty incredible. Okay, the third coat is on. In the coming months and years, I may add another coat or two, but we are at a usable table. Look back at where we started for just a moment, and then look at where we are now. I am really happy with how this turned out, but honestly I'm not surprised. Wood is a stunningly beautiful material, especially with a bit of oil. Almost any piece of old wooden furniture can be refinished to give something that looks amazing. This could certainly be used as a dining room table again, but that isn't the future I see for it. This is gonna be my game table. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing to Goobertown Hobbies or sharing this video with someone. That'd really mean a lot to me. On this channel, I share hobbies and projects that are fun and rewarding. A lot of the focus is on gaming and painting models, but you never know when I'll pull out something a little bit different. So I've refinished a few pieces of furniture in my life, but I'm by no means an expert. I'm a hobbyist and an amateur. If you have any suggestions for how to improve projects like this, I'd love to hear them. Also, if anyone can ID the type of wood in this table, or knows the name for these jagged vertical joints, please let me know. Anyway, this thrifty table project really makes me happy, and I hope that you like it too. And that's all for this time. Thank you so much for watching.